Welcome to Market Headlines. International Rating Agency, or Fitch, affirms Indonesia's rating at triple B with a stable outlook. Fitch mentions that one of the key drivers is favorable medium-term growth prospect. International Rating Agency Fitch affirms Indonesia's rating at triple B with stable outlook. Fitch mentioned that one of the key drivers is favorable medium-term growth prospect. According to Fitch ratings, the decline in economic activity has been seen from the second quarter of 2020. Economic growth contracted last quarter, resulting in negative growth of 5.32% year-on-year. This is even deeper than the agency thought. The contraction is exacerbated by the effects of social distancing measures and consumption and investment, a temporary deterioration in Indonesia's terms of trade and the sudden stop in foreign tourism inflows. Furthermore, Fitch Ratings is still optimistic that Indonesia's economic growth will soar in 2021. Fitch projects that Indonesia's economic growth could be in the range of 6.6% next year. From all sources, IDX Channel. Yes, viewers, Fitch decided to maintain Indonesia's credit rating at triple B. But how was Fitch's assessment on Indonesia's credit rating? So let's find it out through these following graphics. Here it is, we can see Indonesia's sovereign credit ratings history. Let's take a look first in 2018, whereas the data specifically taken by September 2nd. Here it is, we can see that the rating is in the triple B and the outlook is stable. And then moving on to 2019, the rating still triple B and the outlook still stable and it was taken by March 14 before the elections and the upheaval economy and then moving on to January 2020 the exact date is 24th and the rating still triple B and the outlook still stable and if we take a look by August 10th 2020 which is just a couple of days ago the rating is triple B with the outlook in the stable conditions based on the data we can see that through 2018 to 2020 the rating is still in the triple b quite stagnant and the outlook still stable even though we are in the midst of pandemic through 2020 which has given an upgrade in indonesia's rating to triple b since december 2017 where previously de december 2016 to july 2017 indonesia's credit rating was still at the triple b minus with the affirmations of indonesia Indonesia's rating at a triple P, it means that Indonesia still maintained the investment grade level. Bank of Indonesia stated that this latest credit rating from a form of Fitch recognitions of Indonesia's macroeconomic stability and economic prospects. So, what were the main factors or the keys in the latest Fitch decisions? We are moving on to the next graphic. Here it is, we can see Indonesia's key rating drivers. First of all, it's a favorable medium-term growth outlook that Fitch Ratings has delivered in the other days. And then the low government debt to GDP ratio. So we can see that our ratio debt to GDP is still healthy enough compared to other countries. And from a government debt side, Fitch forecasts that a general government debt to rise to 36.7% of GDP in 2020 from previously 30.6% of GDP in 2019 and to peak at 39.1% of GDP in 2022. Both that burden it's and its increase it, it this year at 6% of GDP are still significantly smaller than the triple B category median of 51.7%. And also, meantime, Fitch sees that Indonesia is still facing some issues. The information is on the next graphic. Through the next graphic, we can see the highlight that challenges Indonesia in the credit rating itself. First of all, Indonesia still have a high dependency on external financing, such as loan from the international institutions like IMF, 
or maybe JICA or maybe uh, World Bank. And then the second one is that low government revenue because we are as a developing country still try to maintain infrastructure rather than to earn the revenue. And the third one is that lagging in structural features compared with peers. By meaning peers, it is more to other countries and first of all maybe it's a, a neighbor country. And Fitch sees that Indonesia economy is less developed on the number of structural metrics than many other of its peers. Indonesia's relatively low basic development in educated by its ranking on the UN Human Development Index by 41st percentile versus the triple B median of 67th percentage, while the average per capita GDP also remained low at a 4,000 US dollar compared with the triple B range median of a 9,000 US dollar. With the many existing challenges, what is Fitch projections on Indonesia economy? So let's check it through the next graphic. So here it is. We can see Fitch forecast on Indonesia economy. As we can see in 2020, the economic activity will contract by 2%. As we know that COVID-19 pandemic hit all countries, including Indonesia, even many countries with a big economy goes deep into recessions. But however, Fitch kind of optimistic that Indonesia will only contract it by 2%. And 2021, Fitch forecasts that Indonesia will have rebound to 6.6% .6 growth of GDP, which is quite optimistic in here, we can see. And 2022, this is a growth momentum to continue at 5.5% of the GDP. Fitch forecasts economic activity in Indonesia will contract by 2% in 2020, largely attributable to the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. The contractions is exacerbated by the effect of social distancing measures on consumptions and investment and the temporary deterioration in Indonesia in terms of trade and the sudden stop in foreign tourism inflows. Fitch forecasted that the rebound in 2021 partly driven by a low base effect and expects growth of momentum continue in 2022, supported by the part by the government's renewed focus on infrastructure development. Fitch forecasts that are subjects to considerable risk, in particular due to a continued spread of COVID-19 within Indonesia. Then how is Fitch assessment of steps taken by the relevant authorities in Indonesia. Let's move on to the next graphic. Here it is. We can see Fitch views on Indonesia's policies. First of all, we can take a look at the government side of it. First of all, government provided broad range of relief measures to support household and companies. And we can see that government also give a three-year suspensions of a self-imposed deficit ceiling of 3% of the GDP. And then Moving on to the next policy is that the debt burden to revenue ratio of 307.7% in 2020, which is, it is higher than any other peers. And moving on to the central bank policy that we may assess from Fitch point of view. First of all, provided liquidity by cut rate by 100 BPS to 4%. And not to mention about the burden sharing, uh, this scheme would raise the potentials of government interference with the monetary policy making. And the third one is that expecting Bank of Indonesia to keep the rate unchanged. The other thing is, Fitch sees that Indonesia's government is continuing to press ahead its structural reform efforts. Fitch believes that the form of the potential lift economic growth and foreign direct investment over the medium term, depending on the details and implementation. And hopefully, the latest Fitch rating will again elevate global investors' trust and confidence on Indonesia economy. And stay tuned to market headlines because we will be right back with more coverage after this quick break.